If I were to ask you, what do you think and feel excellence looks like? What is excellence to you? What I'd like you to do is take out your phones and just scan the QR code or go on to mentimeter.com and put in the code. menti.com and put in the code. And answer that question, what excellence looks and feels like to you? So there's three words that I'd like you to think about what excellence means to you. Once you've put them in, we'll start to see the results. How many have we got coming in? What does excellence mean to you? Correctness, yes, correctness. Quality, outstanding. Ooh, wonderful, it's all coming through now. Quality, perfection, interesting word there. Perfection, outstanding, amazing, beautiful. Isn't that a lovely word, beautiful? Quality, outstanding, perfection are the words that seem to be coming through really strong here. Fantastic, outstanding, goodness, principles, accomplishment, stand out, effortless, effectiveness, love that. Thank you very much. Thank you for those, those words. We'll see if some of that comes through in the presentation here today. Sort back. Lovely. Excellent. Ah, oh, it's not working. Right, we're not back. Let's see if I can move the slides on. Right. Okay, so customer experience isn't just about the destination, it's about the whole experience. Now we talked about um, what, what's the image that you might have in, in your mind, and I'm going to present to you some other images that may help you to think about what is stand out, beautiful, some of the words that you used. So it may be, a cocktail with your best friends, as I was doing, 40 years experience that you've got with a friend, and you're sharing a cocktail. Mine had balls in it. It could be you're out in a beautiful environment, and you're doing something you absolutely love. You're really challenging and testing yourself, and it's the exhilaration. It could be that to you. It could be your fairy tale. Maybe it's that that makes you think of something that stand out, beautiful, the words that you use. It could be this. Maybe you're thinking about innovation. You have more of an engineering mind, and, and this is what uh, stand out, beautiful, your words, what it means to you. Something that's very innovative, a business, and customers love the design, the shape, the beauty of it. It could be this. This is what's important. This is what makes you think of stand out, beautiful, perfect. This company has certainly won lots of awards, not one year, but several years again and again and again. It could be this. This company seems to have the Midas touch, not for everything, but they're constantly challenging themselves, trying to reach for more and more. So it may be this. It could be this. Think of an environment that you're in where you, the awesomeness, you're feeling the energy coming at you. Maybe this that you're thinking about when you're thinking of what stand out beautiful means to you. 
being in an environment. It could be this type of environment you think of classical style, uh, beauty, design, quality. Maybe this is what you may be thinking about. Or more of a Baroque style, very ornate. Maybe it's, it's that. Or it could be this, you know, the beauty of the Adriatic, the culture, the history. Maybe it's something like this. Or it could be this, the only thing you need to do, and it's really simple, is look out to the horizon. That's it. Nothing else is asked of you. Now, the reason why I'm going through this is because your customers are exactly the same as you. They think of a story in their mind that they want you to fulfill. Beauty, outstanding, perfect, the dream that they may be having. When you're selling, what you're selling is the dream that's in your customer's mind. And it's up to you to get that out, to get that out and to deliver on their promise. That's what they're coming to you for. And it's all wrapped up in customer experience, the experience they want to have when they book with you. Many people think about sales rather than thinking about buying. What is your customer buying from you? They're buying an experience, the experience that they have in their mind's eye that they want you to deliver on. And it's really up to you to get out from them, from the questions, from the process of the buying, to understand exactly what is the dream they're trying to achieve in booking with you. That's what sales is, as simple as that. It's about asking the right questions, having the right process, giving them an experience, not actually when they get on the yacht, but long before that. It's the questions you ask them. It's meeting their dreams of what they feel, whether it's perfection that they're looking for, whether it's beauty, whether it's standout. All the words, words that you used, that's what they're looking for as well. So it's all very well we say that we're world class, but world class really takes the crew, the management and the owner working together on the same page, understanding what the customers really want from them, and all of them working together to deliver that to the customer. From the very beginning of the inquiry, and long after they become a customer, and onto the next charter booking with that particular customer. So the journey is all wrapped up in the experience. The sale is all wrapped up in the experience. That's what I want you to, to um, get from this presentation today. Remember, at close quarters is an opportunity to create that enchantment that the customer really wants. But it starts a long time before from the initial inquiry. The sales process really is a buying process. And the buying process is all about the customer. It's not about you, your charter, the boats, the processes. No one's interested in that. It's really about delivering on their dream of what perfection might be. So every customer has a unique story in their head. And your job is to get that story out. <laughs> So welcome to Simplicity Meets Excellent Sales. I'm Janice B. Gordon, and I'm going to take you on a journey, a journey to experience what your customer experience and deliver on their dreams, their aspirations. We're going to talk about simplicity, excellence, and sales, and the relationship between those. So in the next 30, 40 minutes, we'll have time at the end for questions, and I've got some resources for you. Now, I um, booked a private dining on, and had uh, a birthday celebration on Saturday. 
This was in the Sky Gardens, which is London's highest public garden. It's a social space, and you get 365 degrees of the iconic London skyline. Excellent sunsets and sunrises from this high position. So it's absolutely beautiful. There was only 15 of us in my um, party, and so it should be relatively straightforward because I had a concierge that was helping me to deliver on what my dream was for that experience of this group of people that had been my friends, some of them for over 40 years. So it should be relatively simple. But oh my lord, it took 15 emails to, of toing and froing to actually sort out one of my guests that had food allergies, 15 emails. I felt like I was the one constantly doing the work, always picking up on their mistakes, always asking them for, for information that they didn't send me. It wasn't the best process. So my experience as this beautiful, iconic place was not the best. And it wasn't about when we actually got there, we had a good time. It was everything from the very beginning leading up to the actual date, which was on Saturday. So your customers may be overwhelmed with the amount of decisions they need to make. They may be overwhelmed with you know, all of the steps they need to take, because they don't always understand the process. Your job is to make it easy for them the easier you can make it for your customers, the more likely they are to come to you again because they feel this is a safe place for them to do whatever they need to do to achieve their aspirations and their goals. So businesses that are customer-centric are 60% more profitable, more profitable if you're focusing on your customers. Now, you can see we still had a good time, and Bev was there as well. The buying sales process is the experience that you deliver to your customer. Now, you can always turn that around, but it's important for you to focus on that in your delivery of your products and your services. Focus on, on the customer. And it's really about how you organize the processes, every single little step, how you communicate every single little step to your customer, what questions you ask in order to garner the kind of experience that your customers want. So who's here an F1 fan like me? Anyone else? Ah, love it, love it, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I always use this as an analogy in explaining some of the processes that your organizations, whether it's a sales, your sales organization or the whole operation needs to go through. Because if you think about it, if you're a pilot, you have a checklist. You want them to have a checklist because they're taking off and you're in it. If you're a surgeon, they have a checklist. If you're an F1 team, for Every part of the process, there's a checklist. How many of you here have businesses and every single part of your process, there's a checklist? How many? Yeah? Every single part of your business is a checklist. Not enough of you. Okay, well, I'm hoping to convince you that this is something that you might consider doing going forward. If you're wanting to reach excellence, then this is one way of actually doing it. And I'm going to give you 10 steps in the process of things within your operation that you need to think about. And the first is uh, a culture of excellence. If you have a culture of excellence, then you're 70 times more likely to beat your competition. And that's really, on everyone in the organization understanding what are the values of excellence. What are the values of excellence? And then looking at uh, having a clear vision and strategy. 
If, uh, if you um, think of the um, vision and strategy, what we're talking about is culture, strategy, and implementation. You've got to have all of those three aligned. And in the case of Mercedes, they've got the culture, they've got the strategy, but what they fell off was in the application, and they're now on catch-up. Red Bull at the moment, all three of those elements are really well aligned and they're leading the pack. Uh, Ferrari, Ferrari has none of them aligned, but they're on a 10-year implementation plan. And it's really looking at the experience of these teams and what they're doing and how they're doing it, but it's important you have those three prongs approach. So the culture, the, uh, the strategy, and the implementation, really important. So vision and strategy. And then it's about the empowered team. In my scenario, the concierge team, every time I got an email, it was from a different person. They didn't read the history of the email. So that's why it was so disconnected as, as a team. When I asked them, um, where is the nearest parking for the photographer that I had, they couldn't tell me. Now, the Sky Gardens isn't moving from port to port like many of you that may be agents here. I mean, it's really quite a simple process to have that information available for your customers. So you've got to have an empowered team, really important. And then continuous improvement. And this is what the 10-year Ferrari plan is about, implementing continuous improvement. Now, some of you um, put perfection when I asked you for your words of what you know, excellence was about. It's not really about being perfect. It's actually about starting. That's what it is, starting on an improvement plan. Perfection doesn't ever really exist because your customers' preferences are constantly moving. And then it's about um, being customer-centric. If you're customer-centric, then you're a company like Apple's completely transformed and continue to transform what they're doing by really understanding what their customers need. That's how they're able to continue to lead the pack. So taking a data-driven uh, approach. Now, I work with revenue-generating teams and I take a, a data-driven approach. And this is looking at sales excellence. And this is from a database of assessments that we've been carrying out for the last 25 years. And it's across uh, 200 countries and, uh, no, 200 industries and 154 countries. So we've got 2.5 million assessments for across all different sales positions. We know what sales excellence looks like. And we can tell you, for your industry, for your different roles, what sales excellence looks like, and matching your individuals against that. If you've got a operation, you've got to have the people within the, your team that are working at an elite level in order to have an elite team and an elite operation. So it's knowing what excellence looks like in your team, being able to bench that against your industry. And then it's really um, investing in technology. You all know here how important that is, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Yeah? Investing in technology is so important for, for the yachting and charter industry. And then leadership is absolutely critical. Bev uh, has got a presentation that talks about leadership and culture of, of teams, so I, w I won't talk too much about that, but it's critical to have the right leadership in, in place. And then measuring uh, success. What gets measured gets done. And if you don't know the right metrics to measure, then you're not going to get to where you want to be in terms of like excellence in your team, excellence in your product, excellence in your, your operation as well. And then finally, looking at sustaining that level of excellence as well. How are you going to sustain that? So I really want you to start to think about, of those 10 elements, how many do you think you're at an excellence point. Which ones are the ones that you really need to work on in your organization? 
okay, when you look at that, are you like me getting a headache? I mean, it's just so complicated, isn't it? But this is the buying journey for a lot of your customers, all of the different touch points that they need to go through. It's crazy the amount of barriers that we set up for our customers, simply because we don't have information available to them, or we ask them too many questions, or we're not leading them along the process and holding the hand, or we don't really know what their outcomes, what their desires and dreams are. We haven't asked them. So we're just taking them on, on a journey a bit blindfolded. So, what we need to do is simplify this process as much as possible. Louder. Louder. Simplicity sells. The simpler you can make it for your customers, you can see for these top 10 organizations, at their core is simplicity. It's leading your customer along a journey they want to go to reach what they consider to be their aspiration, their dreams, what they think is excellence for them. But it's you that's leading them along by the questions and the process that's what sales is, is helping your customers to achieve what they want, but doing it not with that previous and this complicated processes and whatever, but it's actually having that checklist, simplifying the process as much as possible to take your customers where they really want to go. 70% of buyers state that their last purchasing experience was complex or difficult. This is what we're doing to our customers. We need to simplify the process for them. You're three times more likely to get a higher deal and with less regret if you make the process simple. So imagine you know, you're holding their hand and leading them along and explaining everything as you go. That's what you need to do. So your job is to make it easy for your customers. That's what sales is. So, what I'd like you to think about is what are the matters that mo the, the moments that matter most to you? What are the moments that matter most to you? Okay, so again, if you've got your phones, let's get the QR code out and just answer the moments that matter most to you to you personally, to you personally, the moments that matter most to you personally. And let's just answer that question. What are the moments that matter most to you personally? Okay. Let's see what's coming through here. Family, yes. Family, family time, respect, kindness, simplicity, wonderful. Friends time, happy customers, enlightenment, clear answers, straightforward. Can you see the moments that matter most to you? It's very personal, isn't it? 
Very different to what we, the first one, this is very personal. Now, I want you to think of your customers. What are the moments that matter most to them? No difference, is it? That's what matter most to your customers, family, friends, love. All of us, we're all the same. We're all exactly the same. The moments that matter most. Now, we will be giving you the results of all of these um, QR codes, so you will be getting um, them along with the presentation. So thank you very much for participating in this. Kim Vip Patterson grew up in the coastal town of Copenhagen. He said that he, none of his family were into sailing. And he has, he's the CEO of the coffee firm Scanamat and has been a lifelong enthusiast of uh, sailing. To the extent in the last 15 years, even though he's in his 70s, in the last 15 years, he's been actively participating in the regatta circuit. And he says that he loves nothing better than being active while on board, either racing or with a glass of wine in his hands. He says the thing that matters most to him is when he has his wife and his two sons on board with him. He says he doesn't like reading or listening to podcasts, but what he likes to do is just enjoy the moment and watch the wildlife. And he says he's very well looked after with a um, crew of nine on board. And that's what's important to him. Now, he's running a multi-million pound company, or dollar company, but that's what's important to him. Exactly the same words that you said, family. Family. But he still wants the exhilaration, but it's the escapism. A yacht is so much more than a transportation method. It's an opportunity to challenge yourself against the elements. It's a retreat. It's a zone of tranquility. It's a realignment of yourself. It's a space to be at peace and to be with the people you love, your family. That's the thing that matters most, not only to you, but to your customers as well. So you've got to elevate your charter business and experience. I had I told you I had a birthday recently, so I went to Northern Rights and I was lucky enough to see it as well. You know, I've always wanted to do this, and this is on many people's lists, but when you do, oh, you know, the exhilaration. These are the moments you always remember in your life. Now, I want you to think about the moments within your business that you can ensure that you deliver on what, what your customers want what they want the most. And so the four areas I'd like you to think about is really finding your ideal customers. Not every customer is your ideal customer. In fact, very few customers are your ideal customers. And it's understanding who is your ICP, your ideal customer profile. But more than that, who is the unique group of people? When you understand that, it's much easier for you to market to them. And that's what you need to do. You need to put your head, your head, your mind in their head and use their language. And it's easier to do if you understand who they are and what their aspirations are and what their ideals are. So that's the first thing that you need, need to do. To deliver on their desires, you've got to know who they are. And then it's about streamlining the sales buyer experience to win more deals. And it's about having an aligned sales, marketing, customer success. But remember I talked about the values, you know, to create the right kind of culture. And all of you, whether it's crew, management, owner, all of you are aligned to that in order to be focused on what you, you're delivering, what's unique about your offering that you're delivering to your customers. And then it's uh, uh, about onboarding for quick value. 
And this is, remember I talked about the checklist, the checklist of onboarding for quick value, but what, what do we mean by value? What does it mean to you, and what does it mean to your customers as well? You know, what are the quantitative and qualitative return on investments that you're looking for, and what are the ones that qualitative and quantitative that your customers are looking for? How can you get that as quickly as possible as part of your onboarding process? Well, you're only going to get there if you have that as a key metric and you're able to reach it a lot quicker if you understand what it is and how meaningful it is the moment that matter for your customers. And then it's about nurturing, uh, you know, creating that legacy uh, and making sure that you're nurturing your clients to become long-term, long-term lifetime value of clients. Every time you work with them, you learn more about them, you're able to um, reach more of their goals, you become a lot closer, then you're the only people they want to deal with because you become part of their inner team. So it's really about not only the first interaction or the first booking, but it's the third and the fifth booking. That's what you need to be looking for because you need to have in the metrics in your business that a good 40 to 60% of your business are existing customers. And then the other 20% are the referrals from your existing customers. And I'd like you to think, is that, is that the kind of metrics that you're working with? Are you anywhere close to that? If not, then you really need to look at some of the strategies that I've given you before. That's what you need to be aiming for. That is a great business um, model. So aligning your team to these key moments, those four key moments, understanding who your customers are, the onboarding alignment of, of your team, and then the retention uh, and referrals. You've got to have a particular, a specific strategy for referrals as part of your sales process. Otherwise, you're not going to get them. It doesn't just happen. It's that checklist of everything that you do. So, Bev and I have got a workshop where we talk more about the customer uh, journey and we help you to create a customer journey for success and create the stories that, that sell. So, that's later on today at three o'clock. So, uh, Anthony Lee um, brought his latest yacht and the key thing that was important to him was what you said, moments that matter, it was family. He said that um, his children really look forward, they get so excited about going onto the yacht, and that is what makes him happy. It's always about family. You know, that's what it comes down to, the moments that matter most. Many of your, your clients may have private security, not only for them, but also for their kids. It changes you. This is one, the, one of the, the one space where you can have peace and tranquility. You can be with the people you really, really want to be with. You can go where you really, really want to go. That's freedom. I and mean, it's not always possible in everybody's lives um, to have that. But that's what's important to them. So you may remember um, this kind of iconic picture. Princess Diana, this was one of the one places she could go to escape, to have some peace. You know, that is really special, in that you're able to provide that, that peace for your, your customers. So by following this process, you can transform the way that you sell into more of buying, helping your customers buy what they really want. This is a process that helps you to simplify and streamline your sales process into a buying process that allows your customers to have exactly what they want from you. Simplicity meets excellent sales is really about the compass, the grounding compass that allows you to deliver what your customers want, to help your customers to navigate what is more of a customer-centric sales process. So I said to you that I've got some resources, um, janicebgordon.com resources. Now, if you um, scan the large QR code, that takes you directly to the page. If you scan the small one, that's to my LinkedIn 
um, and please do uh, connect with me. So there's lots of resources on, on that page. There's a section where there's free tools, and in the free tools, you can actually put in your sales operation, your sales team, and it allows you to benchmark against the best. So there's lots of really great tools in there um, for you to play around with. So, any questions? I think we've got a good five minutes. Do we have any questions here that you'd like to ask? Now, I'm also going to be around later on today and especially tomorrow, but uh, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask me about what I've talked about? Are there any online questions? Who's going to be brave? <laughs> yeah? No, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, there's a there's a mic coming round to you. Thank you. Thank you for being brave. <laughs> so at the beginning of your speech, you uh, said that you had this. Uh, you were organizing your birthday party, and you had to send 15 emails up and down. Um, what was your what would have been your favorite or your preferred communication channel for that? Was that email or was that maybe WhatsApp or on the phone? Um, I would, when the first thing goes wrong, when there's a miscommunication, I would love them to have picked up the phone to me. I'd like to have a human voice. And I'm of the age where, you know, we like human voices, really. And so I think that's what you need to do is when... Nothing is ever perfect. We like to think we, things are perfect, but they're not. As soon as anything goes wrong, you need to pick up the phone and you need to take ownership and say, I'm really sorry, we miscommunicated. What is your dream? What's the outcome? Let me make it happen. Get all of the information. Use their keywords that they use at you. You use back at them in marketing. That's what I would like to have. So one person to take ownership. That's all I want. In this scenario, what happened Every time I got an email, it was from a different person that hadn't read the previous emails. As a team, they were not connected at all. So thank you for that question. I, I, I fully agree. I, I think you should always pick up the phone to just clarify things. Yes. And, and uh, make it much quicker. Yeah. In text, there's lots of mis interpretation of words and things. When you speak to somebody, you can actually get so much more done in a short space of time. So, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so my last words to you here are, remember that every skill is a story waiting to be written. It's a story waiting to be written. You know when we just talked about when things go wrong, that story is going to be written about you somewhere, right? So it's always a story waiting to be written. Now you have complete control as to the way it is going to be written. And that's by you engaging early and having a strategy and the implementation of that strategy, you know where you're leading them. Remember I said holding the hand, leading them through the process, you know, so that they feel, oh, this is home. I really, they understand me because you've been clever enough to ask the right questions so that you understand what their idea of excellence is and you know what they want to achieve, and your job is just to fill in the gaps. That's it. That's what sales is. Nothing more. That's it. So, a story could be of adventure. It could be of indulgence. It could be of sales excellence. Always, always sales excellence. You know, your customer experience is completely wrapped up and woven within your buying experience. So it's been completely focused as an operation, not just the sales, but the whole operation in a customer-centric process. So I challenge you to embrace the customer-centric approach to the way that you sell to make it into that buying process. I uh, would like to thank you for embarking on this, this journey with me. May your sales be forever smooth. Do you like that? 
Um, may your experiences, customer experiences, be enchanting, and may your revenues raise the sales. Thank you very much.